This might look like just a regular old tricopter drone, but unlike a typical tricopter, all of the motors tilt with a single servo so it can spin at extreme speeds. Why would I want it to spin so darn fast? Well, when fitted with some wings on the arms, and when the tilt angle of all of them is just right, it actually requires substantially less power to hover than if the three motors were just oriented vertically like a regular tricopter drone. This seems very counterintuitive. If we tilt the motors to enable this spinning, a substantial fraction of their upwards thrust force is lost. If they tilt to 45 degrees, for example, that's half of the total thrust now pushing sideways and not up. This means that the drone will fall if throttle isn't increased. Using our intuition of a regular drone without additional airfoils fitted to it, this would mean that to hover with the motors at this angle, they would basically need to double their power to match the vertical thrust component with the downward weight of the vehicle, enabling a steady state hover. But when we add these wings and make it spin by tilting the motors, the power required to hover actually goes down. Way down. This almost seems like a paradox. We lose a lot of upwards thrust by tilting the motors, but somehow reduce power required to fly. In this video, I'll explain why this is and show off this cool new VTOL platform I've been developing. This was a fairly basic drone build with a few exceptions. The center hub is 3D printed with bearings press fit into the arm mounts to allow them to rotate freely. A single standard size servo at the center with a bevel gear actuates all three tilting arms at once. Out at the end of the arms, I have some regular old mini quad motors with 5 inch propellers. All of the parts and print files I use for this build are linked in the description if for whatever reason you want to build one of these flying abominations yourself. As always with my builds, I'm using my open source Arduino based flight controller Dreamflight to do the flight stabilization. I've added an SD logger and current sensor so we can gather power data while in flight, and a LiDAR distance sensor for altitude hold. And this is my best attempt at squeezing all these electronics on the center hub. Not bad, but not great. So with all of this assembled, it flies fine just like any other tricopter, and there's definitely no shortage of yaw control. I've actually configured the flight controller so that as it spins faster, the tricopter stabilization fades out completely. It's actually passively stable at these high speeds, though I still don't have any directional control. We'll save that problem for another video, so all of the spinny flights in this video are limited in length by how far the thing drifts around in the wind. With stability taken care of, there's still a small problem that needs to be addressed. If we want to measure and compare power consumption at different angular speeds, we need a way to hover at a fixed altitude much better than I could do manually. For reference, here I'm trying to hold a hover with the wings on, and you can see that it's difficult to keep a constant altitude. My bad throttle management would lead to spikes in the power draw, giving us less reliable data to look at later. So I ended up borrowing the LiDAR sensor and some code from my last video where we built a ground effect vehicle that needed to fly a few inches off the ground. Mounting this to the side facing down gives a good altitude reading that is used in a simple PID controller to increase or decrease throttle depending on if the vehicle is below or above the desired altitude of about 4 feet for my tests. I spent some time tuning the controller in my living room with the wings off. I was pretty happy with how well it held altitude, so I used it as a good opportunity to sharpen my basketball skills. But note to self, don't put your hand over the LiDAR sensor that it's using to measure distance to the ground. Since it now holds altitude on its own, that means when we start spinning and there is any change in required throttle, it will automatically adjust how much throttle is commanded to the motors. This will give us much more consistent power draw data for our comparisons with wings on and off. Speaking of data, let's look at the power data for the no wings case first. As we can see, it takes about 83 watts to hover without spinning. Then as we increase our angular speed, we see the power increase as we would expect from our intuition about the thrust vector components. But then the power seems to dip a little bit before increasing some more. What's going on there? Well, this is our first clue at why it is more efficient to spin very fast and hover. Propeller efficiency actually changes as a function of incoming airspeed, or inflow. For a fixed pitch propeller, the efficiency will increase with inflow until a certain point where it drops off dramatically. This drop off in efficiency is caused by the incoming air basically being too fast for the prop to keep a positive angle of attack while it spins. This is why airplane propellers will generally have a higher pitch than flatter looking multi-rotor propellers. So, in the power data, this slight dip is actually the propeller becoming slightly more efficient at generating thrust. At this angular speed, the inflow to the prop is about 25 miles per hour. Beyond this, the power increases again. This is the drag from the arms coming into play. 
which is not too surprising as they whip around at 25 miles per hour at the tip. So let's get the wings on and take a look at the power data now. But first a quick note about my lawn. Yes, I'm aware it needs to be mowed. No, I won't mow it. It actually helps cushion crashes, which I had plenty of when testing my first prototype. But the grass does introduce a problem to our power data collection. The rough surface of the grass confuses the altitude hold we implemented earlier, making it not as smooth as it could be. So as a preface to the data I'm showing you, all of it was collected flying over flat pavement. And this is your friendly reminder to tighten your props. And now we can finally look at the wings on data. Just look at how incredible that is. The regular hover power without spinning has gone up because of the added weight of the wings, but as we start spinning, the power required goes way down. You can even hear the motor start to spool down as the altitude controller lowers the throttle to maintain altitude. The most amazing part of this is that the power reduction isn't just a small amount. It's reduced by a factor of three. That means that this platform can do a loitering hover for three times as long as its regular multi-rotor counterpart. Another way to think of it is that it can freely climb to altitude and use no more power than the multi-rotor uses in a regular hover. I think it's just so cool how it looks like it's screwing itself upward into the air. So why did we get such a large efficiency increase simply by adding wings and spinning? Well, it all comes down to energy and momentum. Propeller thrust is proportional to the change in momentum of the airflow through the propeller. Drag on the propeller is directly proportional to kinetic energy of the air, keeping in mind that drag directly relates to power required. Take a mental note that the power is proportional to velocity squared, while momentum is proportional to only velocity. If you have two props, one twice as big as the other, this relation tells us that the smaller one would need to move the air twice as fast to generate the same thrust. Spinning faster to move the air faster substantially increases the power required due to that pesky airspeed squared term. It is simply more efficient to have a larger propeller that spins slower. No spinning drone paradox here. In our case, we sort of have a hybrid where small inefficient propellers are doing the spinning while a larger efficient propeller does the heavy lifting, kind of like an airplane. By putting the propellers farther out, we increase their moment arm, meaning they need to generate much less thrust to overcome the lesser drag of the larger propeller. If all of this is too hard to follow, just imagine we took an airplane with less thrust than weight, made it fly around in circles, and called it a hover. That's the magic of this vehicle's design. What's cool is that we now have small drone propellers operating much more efficiently in hover on this vehicle with high inflow as we discussed earlier. In other words, we don't need two different propeller designs for hover and forward flight like many other VTOLs do. We can use the same propeller design for both flight modes and get the same propulsive efficiency. In the next video, we'll take a look at power consumption in forward flight for this vehicle, and maybe even touch on some new control methods so we can get intuitive directional control while it's spinning. I've got some tricks up my sleeve for that, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it. Cheers.